As the war in Ukraine enters its third week, Kharkiv, the country's second biggest city, is under bombardment. For the city's remaining residents, the metro system has now become more than just a shelter. It is home to hundreds of the city's men, women and children, and their beloved pets. Together, they sleep and eat in the train carriages, next to the ticket machines and on the platforms, under the high street fashion adverts. While some sit on their phones, others do the laundry and mothers feed their babies. But under the snowy streets, another danger is spreading, one that Nastya is all too aware of. There is a virus circulating around here and I've got it. Do you have a temperature? I don't know. Perhaps I have a temperature. Is it cold here? It's warm in the carriage, but it's quite cool on the platform itself. How long have you been staying here? Around seven to eight days. Talking to our reporter, Nastya says she is longing for the war to be over so she can go home and sleep. I'm scared for my home, for the homes of my friends, very scared for the whole country and scared for myself, of course. <laughs> for Kharkiv's residents, the priority is now surviving the bombing. The city has suffered some of the heaviest shelling since the Russian invasion began last month. According to the local governor, Russian forces have shelled residential areas in the city 89 times in one day. Valentina, an elderly woman camping out nearby to Nastya, recalls the moment her apartment building was hit by shelling, describing the smoke and panelling falling down. During the bombing, an institute containing a nuclear laboratory was also hit, the local governor said on Friday though he maintained there was no danger to the civilian population yet. Kharkiv's mayor also said that 48 schools had been destroyed in the city, which has a peacetime population of about 1.4 million. The United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR, said over 2.3 million people have fled Ukraine following Russia's invasion, which Moscow calls a special operation to denazify the country. It denies targeting civilians.